Well, it's good to have you online with us uh, this evening at Ocean County Baptist Church for our discussion panel. I have uh, Pastor Petrozello and also Pastor Dewana with me. And we're going to be looking in Ephesians chapter 4 and uh, verse 17 uh, through 32. Uh, we were just discussing this. It's quite a bit of information there. I don't know if we'll get through it or not. Uh, we'll see how the Lord leads. And uh, we just want to highlight this chapter or this portion of this chapter. Uh, some great things that the Apostle Paul speaks to us about in reference to our Christian life. And uh, so verse 17 through 19, I just had written down our, our past walk. And I'm going to say, uh, make a few comments here and I'll turn it over to these guys. But in verse 17, it says, therefore, I'm sorry, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind, having the, the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart, who being past feeling, having given themselves over to uh, lasciviousness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. And so I just wrote down our past walk. And uh, in verse 17, that our past walk was different. And uh, so he says, we're not to walk as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their mind. And when a person gets saved, their life does change. And really the challenge is we no longer live our life like we used to. And so that's the challenge there. So our walk is different. And people ought to be able to see that. They ought to see your life as being different than the unsaved. Then I put down blinded because he says that they were alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them because of their blindness. And uh, so uh, without Christ in our hearts, without the, the knowing the Lord and what the witness of the Spirit of God, we grow up in darkness, the Bible says. And, uh, you know, it's always was interesting that when I, before I got saved, I'd read the Bible, I didn't get much out of it. Then I got saved and started reading the Bible. It's like, wow, I didn't see all that in there before. Uh, why? Because God illuminates us and opens our eyes. And then I put down driven, uh, who being, verse 19, uh, past feeling, having given themselves over to lasciviousness, which means to desire and lust after that which is forbidden. And it says, uh, to the work of all uncleanness with greediness. And so they're driven. Greed drives them to satisfy that lasciviousness in their life. That's what our past walk was. But Paul's presenting, as we're going to see as we go through it, what our new life is in Christ. Pastor Petra, is that what you guys have to add there? Yeah, I just want to point out the main word that stood out to me in verse 17. It says, at the end of the verse, it says, walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of the mind, of their mind. And if you look at that word vanity, it means empty or void. I put, I, I thought of this as void of logic. You know, there's a lot of things that we may see even today in our news and what's going on that, you know, we may see that as being void of logic. And I saw one thing, and I don't want to get too political, but I saw one thing and said, you know, talking about, you know, can't have gatherings of 10 or more people and, said unless it's for like a protest and then that's it's okay and it's not a health risk and now all of us listening and all of us really can understand that that's void of logic it doesn't make sense to us and i see that in the bible it even tells us about that that the gentiles those who are unsaved you know they'll see that as okay to be void of logic and i'd encourage you and be really myself to really search things out and to make sure that they make sense Amen. because with god they make sense god's not going to make you do something or ask you to do something that doesn't make sense. Now, it may not make sense to you thinking you can't do it, but God will do it through you. But also I see in verse 19, it says, who being past feeling, having given themselves over unto lasciviousness. And I just think to myself, and you know, there's a lot of things that I see today that I wonder how could somebody do that? Mm -hmm. I mean, how could somebody yeah. do that? Do they not understand the people that they're hurting and the mm -hmm. people that they're, you know, the consequences of that. And I see that, you know, they're past feeling. They've, they've given themselves over to lasciviousness. They're just going with it and they don't feel regret or anything about it. And then I told myself, and I wrote a little note in the side of my Bible, you know, don't get to a point where you're past feeling. You know, in your Christian life, the Bible says that you can be seared with a hot iron, meaning that you can yeah. sin and sin and sin and you just don't feel convicted anymore. 
You know, don't get to a spot where you don't get convicted anymore, because that is about the farthest away from God you can be, is when you can sin and just you feel nothing. Mm. So I encourage you, if you're in sin and you know you're in sin and you're okay with it, you know, check your heart and my, me as well. Amen. Pastor Doyle, you have something to add there? Uh, yeah, I mean, pretty much everything I had was the same thing that Pastor Weigel and uh, Pastor Anthony just covered, and that is the word that I thought of was Pastor brought up was the word different. Um, you know, we are a royal priesthood. We are peculiar people. We are to be different. Um, and, and, you know, when the Apostle Paul is writing this, he says, This I say, therefore, that you, and testify unto the Lord, you henceforth walk not. It's a, it's a warning. It's an admonition. Um, you know, the Bible says, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed into the image of his Son. We are to be conformed into the image of Christ, not into the image of this world. He warns them in, in uh, Romans, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then he goes on and he kind of addresses three areas that I kind of just very quickly labeled mental emptiness. Uh, Pastor Anthony talked about that, and that's the vanity of their mind. You know, there's a lot of people who, you know, think they have all the answers, but in reality, you know, nothing. It's nothing. It's just a lot of empty words. Uh, then in verse 18, I look at spiritual darkness. You know, he talks about that they, their understanding has been darkened, uh, the blindness of their heart. And you see a lot of that going on today. You know, the devil is so blinded. But the Bible talks about their, their eyes being darkened, but their hearts as well. Um, and the only thing that's going to bring bright light to their lives is Jesus Christ. And then in verse 19, I see physical numbness. And Pastor Anthony already touched on this. You know, the, the fact that Paul is, is warning the believers against these things should be a warning to all of us. That we never get to the place where the, the convicting uh, movement of the Holy Spirit in our life is not even there anymore. That we don't sense that movement anymore. That we become so numb to our sin or our worldliness that the conviction of the Holy Spirit no longer has an effect on our lives. Amen. I mean, I, I thought of that course, I'm not going to say it, but that course, the things are different now. And uh, and I love that little course. We often sing it in church. Uh, and the song goes that, you know, things I used to do, I don't do anymore. Why? Because things are different now. And so uh, let's uh, remember what our past walk was and not uh, uh, duplicate that in our present lifetime. Well, verse 20 through 23, I just entitled it, Our Present Change. In verse 20 it says, But ye have not so learned Christ, if so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And so, Pastor Guani, you want to start us off on that? Yeah, the word that I thought of for these verses is the word distinct. Now, we are to be different, but we are distinct. You know, we are, we are the children of God. Um, you know, the, without the blood of Christ that cleanses us, we can't make that, that, that statement. You know, the world, Pastor mentioned it this morning, talking about, you know, there's a lot of people uh, in this nation which will call themselves Christian. But the reality is Christians are those who have placed their faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Christ alone. Not in their works, not in their power, not in their fortune, but in Christ and Christ alone. Um, and we are distinct. We are new creatures. You know, I mentioned this last week when I was preaching that, you know, God didn't save us to be better. He saved us to be new. We are new creatures. The old things, have, all things have passed away. We're no longer, you know, who we used to be. You know, the things I used to do, I don't do them anymore. And so we are to be new creatures, and, you know, our desire now, you know, is different. You know, I often think of that, you know, the things that if we're still desiring the things we used to desire, then something is wrong. Because our whole outlook, our, our desires, the things that we long for, the things that we strive for should all be changing once we're in Jesus Christ. Why? Because we are distinct. We are to be alike. We are to be um, um, unique in the sense that when people see us, they see Christ. They don't see who we used to be. They should see somebody very different. I know, Pastor, you testified from that from the pulpit of you know, the people that, that you used to know saw you and said, you know, they used to make the statement that, you know, you, you know, what are you going to be preaching now? Are you going to be doing this? And you're not going to be hanging out with us anymore. And the reality is we are to be different. Yeah. We are to be different. And we're not supposed to be longing after the same things we used to long after. Amen. Amen. Pastor Anthony. Yeah, what, what I thought of in verse 22 is that he put off concerning the former conversation, the old man. And just the word I thought of was deliberate. You know, it's not just something that you is gonna come naturally. 
know, you have to intentionally every day, you know, tell yourself, okay, I can't do this anymore, especially when, as a new Christian, but even as, you know, someone who's been saved a few years, every day you have to, Paul says, I die daily. Every day you tell yourself, you know, it's not about me, it's not about what I want, it's about what God wants. And it's just, it's a deliberate life, a deliberate action. I actually wrote down what Passion wanted, quoted from his message that, you know, you're not supposed to be better, you're supposed to be a new creature. You know, in my whole life, and I know it's, uh, some specific who struggle with this, and, you know, you just want to be better and do more and do more and be better. Well, you know, the Christian life is, you're, you're not perfect. You're always going to need to do better and be better, but our goal is to, should be to be a new creature, to really just to, you know, put off the old things that we were doing and put on, it was just in the future verse, to put on the new things. You know, it's a, the Christian life is about, you know, getting rid of what you used to do and doing what God wants you to do. And just, if you look at the scripture just from an a, a information standpoint, it talks about the old man. That old man is just your sin nature and who you were pretty much before you got saved. And we'll learn a little bit about the new man in the next coming verses. Amen. And so just so I had to put uh, our past walk in verse 17 through 19, I identified this as our present change in verse 20 through 23. Notice in verse 20, education that's needed you have not so learned christ i think the greatest challenge that we have or i should say one of the great challenges that we have as a christian is in reference to how do we live and what is considered to be christian living uh well the problem is we we might read a lot of books and we might really go and through a lot of devotional things and we might hear a lot of preaching uh, but what about christ uh, Jesus said, you're to do as I have done. And so our example is Christ. So the greatest thing we can do is experience change in our life by learning about Jesus Christ. Go to the Gospels and read through the Gospels and every encounter that Jesus had, every lesson that he taught, uh, read through those things, meditate upon those things, study those things, and then apply those things into your life. And he says, you have not so learned Christ. But then I put the name for that, I put down education needed, but then I put truth experience. In verse 21, notice the last part of the verse, it says, as the truth is in Jesus. The interesting thing is that Jesus didn't say, I might be the way, the truth, and the life, or I hope to be the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so when we deal with change that needs to take place in our lives, uh, it is not just learning about Christ, but seeing the absolute truth that is in Christ. And then I wrote down for verse 22, corruption removed, so that you put off the concerning the former conversation, which is your lifestyle, the old man, uh, which is corrupt according to the deceitful loss. And so corruption that's removed, put off the old man. There are some things God will deliver you from. I know when I got saved, I was an alcoholic, and God took that right away from me. I smoked three packs of cigarettes a day. Uh, God didn't just take that away from me. I had to learn how to put that off. And God gave me 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful just forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And I'll tell you, every time I desired one of those stinking cigarettes, I'd pray that verse. I would pray, read that verse or quote that verse, pray that verse, meditate on that verse, and ask God to take that thing. But what was I doing? I was trying to put that off. And so my present change is education needed, truth experience, corruption removed in verse 23, spirit convicted. Because it says, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The spirit of God will convict us about these things. It will allow ourselves to be sensitive to the prodding of God. Well, we're going to get off of those things. In uh, verse 24 through 30, I wrote down a renewed character. And uh, Pastor Anthony is going to help us out with that as we look at verse 24 through 30. Yeah, I just see in uh, verse 24, it talks about the new man. I see you. you. I did not press it. There you go. Man. I talked about, talked about putting off, and in verse 24, it says putting on. So... There's a deliberate action to put off, but there's also a deliberate action to put on. You know, you have to tell yourself, okay, now these are some things that I need to start doing. You know, I need to start going to church when the doors are open and start soul waiting and 
start praying. There's some new actions that should take place in your life. And it goes through the verses and talks about putting away lying, which is the one I want to touch on in verse 26. It says, be ye angry and sin not. Mm -hmm. You know, there are some things that you should be angry about. You know, I see things on the news that sometimes will make me angry. And, you know, there's some things that, like I said, don't want to get into far, too far into it. But, you know, there's some things that a lot of people now that you can see are angry about. And some of them rightfully so, but it, they miss the left, next part of the verse that says, and sin not. You know, there's never an excuse to sin. Mm -hmm. You know, I talk about yeah. uh, with uh, David, you know, the thing that he did displeased the Lord. You know, God is never like, okay, well, that sin's okay because of your excuse. Or, you know, you're really angry, so go ahead and do whatever you want. You know, be angry and, and sin not. So the Bible pretty much tells you it's okay to be angry, but you have to be able to, to you know, control your anger and, and not sin. I think that's very important in our day and age. Amen. Yes, we go yeah, as, as we went through these verses, the word that came to my mind was distance. Yeah. And, and and this is what I mean by that. You know, Paul just finished saying that we have to put off the former things and now put on the new. Yeah. Put on the new man. And then he goes through a list of a few things. And the, the verse that came to my mind is where Paul, um, I believe it's when he's talking to Timothy, when he says, flee also youthful lusts. Yeah. You know, he doesn't say, hey, you know, make an effort to try and put these things. No, he flee, run. Get away from it. And the thought that I have is, hey, we need to put off the old, put on the new. We put, we need to put distance between these things. Yes. You know, uh, people often, you know, we read that verse in, uh, in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, and it talks about by the transform, by the renewing of your mind. I often think about it, that the more, the more that we are, um, what's a good word, the more that we are filling our thoughts and our lives with the things of God, the less room there is for the things of this world, the, yeah. the less room there is for the former things. And so that's the idea. If you look through as you know, it's you go from lying to truth. And that's what he talks about in verse number 25. Put away lying, uh, speak every man truth. So we need to go as believers. We need to, listen, lying should never be a part of our life. But we need to move from lying, flee or run, put distance from lying to truth. Yeah. Then he goes, talks about anger. And Pastor Anthony talked about that. From anger to reconciliation. You know, yeah. sometimes we hang on to that anger. We hang on to that rage. And, you know, for some people, they, they'll even tell you, hey, it fuels me. No, let's be fueled by a heart and a spirit of reconciliation. Um, because, you know, that anger will lead to bitterness, that leads to wrath, that leads to hatred. And it's just not a good good effect. Um, then he talks about um, let him that steal, steal no more. You know, we go from theft to hard work. Um, you know, you see a lot of things going on today. And, you know, uh, it, yeah, it's easier to steal than it is to work. But God desires for us to do the right thing. And he says that the working with his hands, the thing which is good, God says that's a good thing. And then the last thing he talked about, let no corrupt communication. Um, I thought of going from slandering to edifying. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the things that we say, once those words are out, we can never take them back. Yeah. And the harm that they do is there. And, and to, do, to have restoration, reconciliation after saying a hurtful thing, that takes a long time. And, and that hurt um, is something that takes time to, to overcome and it takes time to reconcile. But let's move from slandering edifying let's build one another up let's look for words that will that will help us grow in our faith as opposed to cutting people down amen so our past walk our present change and our renewed character in verse 24 i just put down a new man he says here to put on the new man which after god has created righteousness and true holiness and then verse 25 i said a new honor and so wherefore put away lie and speak every man truth with his neighbor so we would be honorable in how we relate one towards another. Verse 26, I put down a new temperament. Be angry and sin not. And, I'll, you know, we, we live in an angry society. I'm, I'm shocked how many times we have to deal with anger issues in the kids that are in our grammar school for our Christian school. And uh, we live in a very angry uh, era. And uh, wait a minute, in Christ, I can have a new temperament. And then in verse 27, I thought about a new authority. Neither give place to the devil. You don't, you don't have to fall into the authority of the devil. He is a feet of foe. Uh, Christ is the final authority in our life. And then in verse 28, I put down a new resolve. Let him that stole steal no more. And then he goes through it. It says that he may have to give to him that needeth. And so, 
a new resolve. Instead of stealing and taking what is not mine, I'm going to work hard so I can gain something to give to somebody else. And then verse 29, I wrote down a new conversation. It says, let no corrupt communication proceed out of their mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying. And so uh, our voice, our words that we say is going to be used differently. And then verse 30, I put down a new experience. And the new experience, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed into the day of redemption. And so I want to live my life in a way that the, the Spirit of God is manifesting itself in me. Well, there's two verses left. I think we can wrap this up with a couple of comments. On let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Be kind one towards another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. Pastor Anthony, how about you help us out there? Sure. I just I think Paul really just sums up what he was trying to say in the whole chapter. It's pretty much, you know, this is your old life and talking about bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking. He says, put that away. And he says, this is your new life, is to be kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And I honestly think it's true that, you know, we as Christians should be the nice person in the neighborhood. We should be known as, oh yeah, I'll ask him. They'll always be willing to help. And they're very, you know, just a nice person. And really, I see a lot in verse 31 that has to do with our mouth. You know, the tongue is one of the, they say, the most powerful muscle in the body. Not because it's the biggest or it can lift the most, but it can do the most damage. You know, yeah. the tongue is, you know, James 3 talks about it's a fire. It's a world of iniquity, but also can be a world of help. And you can change somebody's life really with your tongue, whether it's a preaching or whether it's giving them the gospel, just a kind word that they really needed. So I encourage you, you know, Christian life, and a lot of it has to do with how you talk and how you talk to other people and with your family. You know, if you were to ask, if somebody were to ask your kids, you know, is mom and dad a nice person or are they angry a lot? Or they, you know, do they yell a lot or do they tender heart and do they forgive a lot? You know, if someone were to ask, you know, my wife, for change, for instance, you know, is Anthony very, a nice person or not? You know, we sh as Christians should be known as nicer people, you know, be kind. You know, it almost sounds like a kid's lesson, but it's sad to say a lot of adults could use it, you know, mm -hmm. to be kind Amen. one to another. You know, I could use it myself, but as Christians, we should be known as the nice person, as the person who's easy to talk to. Amen. Pastor Bono? Yeah, for these last couple of verses, the, the word that came to my mind was delight. It says, it grieve not the Holy Spirit. Um, you know, how do we grieve the Holy Spirit? People often ask that. Well, by not following the leading of the Holy Spirit, by doing things. Um, you know, the Spirit of God dwells within each and every one of us. You know, even though the world or others may not know what we're thinking or what we're contriving in our hearts, the Spirit of God does. Yes. And when we when we start to think upon things and 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 try and do things in our in our heart that go against the, the that go against the, the Spirit of God, we're grieving the Spirit. When the Spirit of God convicts us and we choose to ignore that conviction or that leading, we're grieving the Spirit of God. And, and I thought, instead of grieving the Spirit, let's delight in the Spirit's leading. You know, it talks about in verse 31, let all bitterness. You know, the word I want to look at is let, you know, permit, allow. In other words, that's a decision we need to make. We need yeah. to allow the Spirit of God yeah. to change us. Yeah. You know, we oftentimes try and do this in our own spirit. Well, I just need time and that bitterness will be gone. Time heals all wounds. No, that's not necessarily yeah, true. true. Yeah. Reconciliation heals wounds. Um, when we, you know, the Bible talks about it. If, there, if you have a problem with a brother, you go to that person and you make it right. Time doesn't, you know, just having distance from people. I understand the principle behind it, but just getting away from somebody and pretending that that problem no longer exists doesn't fix the problem. That's a worldly philosophy to a solution that the Bible doesn't talk about. But then it goes on and says, be kind one to another. Let me leave you with this. I read this verse and I love it. Uh, David wrote in Psalm 40, I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Mm -hmm. And may that be our prayer, that our delight is to do the things that God would desire for us to do, that the Spirit's leading would be a delight in our life. And let's not grieve the Spirit, but let's delight, let's be kind, tender-hearted, forgiving one another. Amen. Amen. So just a closing thought here, as I outline this uh, portion, our past walk, our present change, our renewed character, in these last two verses I put down our peaceful relationship. And really, Verse 31 and 32 is the conclusion of everything that Paul said beginning in verse 17 
of the difference that uh, our salvation, our relationship with Christ makes in our life. And I just put down this for 31, aggressive nature is ended. You know, there's no justification for us to be aggressive, angry, out of control. If we're walking in the spirit, we're not going to fulfill the lust of the flesh. So aggressive spirit nature ended. And then verse 32, I put down forgiving spirit started. And, and listen, if you can end the aggressive spirit and nature that you have in you, it's easy to manifest a forgiving spirit towards others. We can be kind and forgiving. And I heard someone the other day, it was, there was a situation of wrong that had been done. And they asked the individual this, Could, can, now can you forgive this person? And he said, I'll never forgive somebody. You, you understand when he made that statement, he was condemning himself. And uh, because of the fact he's going to harbor that unforgiving spirit, that's going to continue to feed the spirit and bitterness and anger. But in Christ, in Christ, we can come to the point of being kind one towards another, forgiving one another, even as God did for Christ, even as Christ did. With it, even as God did for Christ's sake. Amen. All right, well, we're going to have to stop. Man, we went through those verses pretty quick. A lot of information there. Be sure to read through them again, meditate upon them. A great chapter. Paul really helps us in how to live our Christian life. Let's pray, and we'll be starting our live stream preaching in about five, six minutes. All right. Thank you so much, Lord, for this time together. Thank you that we could go through this passage and uh, just highlight a few of the thoughts that are there. Uh, I pray that we might be able to take those thoughts now and allow them to blossom in our very spirit, in our soul, Lord, that we might be changed and that Christ will be glorified. And I pray, Lord, I really pray right now, if there's somebody, that someone that is listening right now that is unwilling to forgive somebody, I pray that you'd give them the spirit of grace that they might be able to get the bitterness and anger out of their heart and out of their life. And Lord, that they might have a spirit of forgiveness and grace that would typify the character of God in, through Jesus Christ. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless your tuning in.